one of the most evil person I've ever sat across the table from. No. You're not getting out of jail. It makes me physically sick to look at you. DNA test will prove me. Don't tell me how to do my job. I watch forensic files. Do you believe everything they put on TV is real? How stupid are you? Really, Isabella? Does that make any goddamn sense to you? Stop calling me Isabella. I'm That's your name! It's, no, it's not. You've come in here tried to f***ing act like you're so goddamn smart. It's surprising how often a convict's appearance can shape their fate. Courtrooms across the globe have witnessed strikingly attractive individuals standing trial for appalling crimes. Not all of them are aggressive or criminal masterminds, but they undeniably possess a magnetic physical allure. Just one glance at the individuals on this list could leave you spellbound. First up is Estibales Carranza, a Spanish-Mexican businesswoman gained notoriety for her gruesome crimes. In 2008, she shot and killed her husband, followed by her partner in 2010, hiding their remains for over two years. Carranza used a chainsaw to dismember the bodies and stored the parts in ice cream containers buried beneath the floor of her ice cream parlor in Vienna. Dubbed the Ice Cream Killer, she's considered so dangerous that she's housed in an all-male prison. Carranza has written a memoir, My Two Lives, The True Story of the Ice Lady, during her time in jail. Her story is one of the most notorious in Austrian crime history. Next, we have Sandra Van Wardenberg, also known as Oregon's Jessica Rabbit, has a criminal record that includes charges for delivering meth, robbery, and unauthorized use of a vehicle. Her online profile on Meet an Inmate suggests that despite her mistakes, she's more than just her criminal past. Described as spunky and eccentric, Van Wardenberg is looking to connect with someone on a deeper level. Much like Jessica Rabbit, who famously said she's not bad, just drawn that way. Van Wardenberg's story may be more complex than meets the eye. Nanette Packard's involvement in the 1994 murder of businessman Bill McLaughlin shocked many. Despite her girl-next-door appearance, Packard was convicted of convincing her NFL linebacker lover, Eric Naposky, to commit the murder. McLaughlin was found shot six times in his Newport Beach home, Packard and Naposky allegedly went on a spending spree afterward, suggesting a motive tied to a hefty life insurance payout. Packard, in her first interview in two decades, discussed her relationship with McLaughlin and her affair with Naposky. Both Packard and Naposky deny involvement in McLaughlin's death, blaming other suspects, including McLaughlin's son. The case remained unsolved for over a decade until a fresh review of evidence and new interviews with key witnesses in 2008 led to Packard's and Naposky's arrest warrants. Packard was sentenced to life in 2012. In her interview, Packard described McLaughlin as having a great personality and being a father figure to her, teaching her about business and including her in financial matters. Next is Emily Helton, a 33-year-old inmate seeking companionship on Meet an Inmate determined to break free from her past. Currently serving time for her involvement in methamphetamine manufacture, specifically buying pseudoephedrine for a local meth cook, Helton's struggle with addiction led her to a Tennessee jail. However, she's actively working through a substance abuse program, eager to transform her life. Despite her challenges, Helton remains optimistic about the future, stating, Everyone has a past, but I am so excited about the future. She hopes to find friendships that uplift and support her, moving away from the negative influences that brought her to this point. Megan McCullough, known as the attractive convict, unexpectedly rose to fame after her DUI mugshot went viral. Dubbed as just a mom of four from Florida, McCullough's mugshot sparked memes and humorous taglines, such as, arrested for breaking and entering your heart. Her story showcases how social media can turn an ordinary person into a celebrity through unforeseen circumstances. In 2010, McCullough, then 27 and married, went out partying with a friend in Tampa, Florida, intending not to drive. However, when her friend decided to visit her boyfriend, McCullough had to drive home intoxicated. She was pulled over by the police and taken to the station where her teary-eyed mugshot was taken. Little did she know that this mugshot would catapult her to fame two years later. 
Her mugshot was uploaded to the arrests.org database and later featured on The Chive, a blog for men as part of a compilation of attractive women. From there, it spread to other websites and eventually went viral on Reddit, leading to McCulloch becoming an internet sensation. Despite the attention, she remains a mom striving to move past her DUI charge and lead a normal life. Up next we have Morella Ponce, a 20-year-old female gang member, has garnered attention as the new hot felon after her mugshot went viral. Arrested on two felony charges, Ponce was stopped by officers in Fresno, California, while traveling in a car with her child and a loaded gun. She has been charged with carrying a concealed firearm and carrying a stolen firearm, with bail set at $50,000 for each charge. Ponce's striking looks and tattooed appearance have attracted fans on social media, with some offering to pay her bail. Her case highlights the phenomenon of attractive individuals gaining online fame through their mugshots, similar to the hot felon who rose to fame in 2014. Next we have Marquisa Mendoza, previously employed in accounting and marketing, is currently serving time for DUI offenses. Despite her wild streak that led to her incarceration, her most notable feature is said to be her big brown eyes. Mendoza, a prison pen pal, may seem like a catch compared to other felons, given the nature of her offense. Before her incarceration, her life appeared unremarkable, with a mundane job in accounting and marketing. However, her online profile suggests a hidden wild side. Mendoza's love for animals and her status as single and lonely during her first time in lockup make her a potential pen pal of interest for many. Up next, Laura Zuniga, a Mexican model and beauty queen, made headlines in 2008 when she was arrested alongside seven alleged drug traffickers. During a search, authorities found $53,000, two assault rifles, handguns, and a significant amount of ammunition in their possession. Zuniga maintained her innocence, claiming that her boyfriend, Angel Orlando Garcia Urquiza, had abducted her and that she was unaware of his illegal activities. However, Urquiza was a known member of a Mexican drug cartel, leading to Zuniga's arrest. Despite serving only 40 days in jail, Zuniga believes that being associated with the cartel has negatively impacted her modeling career. She disputes the press's portrayal of her as a criminal and asserts that she was a victim of circumstances beyond her control. Zuniga's case highlights the complexities of guilt by association and the challenges faced by individuals who find themselves entangled in criminal activities unknowingly. Despite her short incarceration, the stigma attached to her association with a drug cartel continues to affect her personal and professional life. Zuniga's story serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of being vigilant about the company. One keeps and the consequences of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Next is Jodi Arias, gaining notoriety in 2013 when she was convicted of killing her boyfriend, Travis Alexander, in 2008. The highly publicized court case, which was live-streamed, revealed details of their kinky sex life and included explicit photos found on a digital camera at the murder scene. Despite Arias's claims of self-defense, Alexander was brutally stabbed 27 times and shot in the head. Initially facing the death penalty, Arias was ultimately sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Currently serving time in a maximum security prison, there is an ongoing campaign asserting that she was wrongly convicted. Despite the serious nature of her crime, Arias has garnered attention for her sex appeal, topping charts of hot female inmates. The case remains a controversial and tragic example of a tumultuous relationship that ended in a horrific act of violence. Isabella. Isabella. Seven years after brutally stabbing her mother around 78 times, Isabella Guzman became an internet celebrity and her fans believe that she didn't do anything wrong. I was abused at home by my family for many years. My parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, I left the religion when I was 14. And the abuse at home worsened after I quit. Isabella Guzman, 25, from Aurora, Colorado in the United States, was actually in court for being charged with first-degree murder. The video on TikTok features a sweet-looking girl smiling in court 
while wearing an orange prison jumpsuit with Ava Max's famous song Sweet But Psycho dubbed over it. Despite the severity of her crime, the juxtaposition of her innocent appearance with the catchy pop song created a bizarre fascination among viewers, leading some to question her guilt. Guzman's unexpected rise to internet fame underscores the surreal and often unsettling nature of true crime culture on social media. The viral video sparked widespread debate and speculation about Guzman's innocence or culpability, further blurring the lines between reality and online entertainment. If you found this video intriguing, don't forget to like and share it. Subscribe for more chilling true crime stories.